Hi there, my name is Faith and I'm here to help you paint better. This is a great lesson for beginning acrylic painters or for people who just want to brush up on some old skills. Feel free to watch and enjoy or to paint along with me. I'll be using a flathead brush, a filbert brush, which is just a brush with a rounded top, and an even smaller round brush. Each brush that we'll use will start from the largest brush to a slightly smaller brush to the smallest brush. Some paper towel and a cup of water are great for cleaning off your brush as needed. We'll also need something to mix our paint on, a paper plate or a palette come in handy, and something to paint our image on. We're going to create a beautiful impressionistic lilac and you can use canvas paper or acrylic paper or you can paint on a thick piece of watercolor paper or even some cardboard from that leftover Amazon box that's been sitting in your garage. All right, let's get to it. We're going to begin with phthalo blue, cerulean blue, and titanium white. You'll notice that I'm painting on an easel and I'm really loading up my brush. I am using Strathmore brand canvas paper. Again, you don't need to use this specific paper. Just a piece of cardboard or a thick piece of paper will work just fine. I'm really loading up my brush and I'm beginning my background as an abstract painting that reminds me of the sky. I want this painting to look really whimsical, very light and airy, and have that springtime feel. That is why I'm choosing some blue tones and some white that will mix together and create that sky abstract painting. I'm curving my brush as I move, and we're starting with our largest brush that we have. And I'm just seeing how the paint goes on the canvas when I move my hand quickly, and when I move my hand more slowly. Your abstract painting will look different from mine because we're two different people. Our movements are different. What feels natural to me might not be what feels natural to you. If you prefer to move with sharper movements or longer brush strokes, do that. This is a time to play around with the paint and see how it moves when you apply it to the canvas with different motions of your brush. There is no possible way that you can mess this phase of your painting up. It's completely abstract, meaning that it doesn't need to look like anything in particular. Mine reminds me of clouds because of the colors that I'm using. If you don't have phthalo blue and cerulean blue, ultramarine or primary blue will work just fine. Even if you only have one tint or shade of blue, it's okay if you don't have the same exact colors that I do. Use whatever you have lying around. I use Golden Brand paints because they're very high professional quality. They're very pigmented, which means they have lots of color in them, so they go a long way and I don't need to use as much paint. But if you have Liquitex or that Basics brand that they sell at most craft stores, that works perfectly well for just starting out. As you get more into painting and you find that you really enjoy it, that's when you might want to start investing in those higher quality brands, those professional grade paints, which typically are brands like Windsor Newton and Golden. But starting off with Liquitex or that Basics brand is completely acceptable. It will work just fine for these purposes. Now, I am painting on an easel, which is vertical. Because we're just learning to paint right now, I recommend working on a flat tabletop because that's a motion that we're used to using. In school growing up, we use a pencil or a pen, and we're gonna hold our brush the same way that we hold a pencil or a pen because we'll have the most control that way, holding it close to that silver hilt of the handle, not way back at the end. Think about it, if you write and you hold your pencil back at the eraser, your handwriting's gonna be pretty messy. So let's keep our hand close to that silver hilt of the handle, hold it like a pencil, and if you want to start including other colors at this point, I have mixed in a little bit of cadmium red and white because I like a sunset kind of look. So if I have this abstract painting that reminds me of the sky, I want that to have a little bit of pink in it. So I'm just mixing a little bit of red with my white. As I transition over to what is the left hand side of my page, I'm going to start to mix a little bit of water in my paint. Notice I haven't told you to rinse off your brush yet. You don't need to rinse off your brush every time you change colors. If you really want to get a color off of that brush, of course, rinse it in that cup of water and dry it off on the paper towel. But I like to let that paint build up on my brush while I work on my background because I get a thicker, tackier texture that looks more like an oil painting and it ends up looking more full and sophisticated. We're trying to cover a lot of ground right now, so mixing a little bit of water in with our paint, so just dipping that brush into your cup of water and then rolling it around in the paint before you go on your canvas can help you to get much smoother transitions and grades. 
gradients. You might love this look much more than that thicker beginning of our painting, or maybe you liked the look as we began. This is the time to figure out what you like and what we prefer. If you don't have a preference yet, feel free to do both in the way that I am. I like to have the contrast and texture. I like to have that paint globbed up on my brush and put directly onto my paper. And I also really enjoy thinning out the paint and having a much smoother area that feels kind of reminiscent of a bright blue springtime sky. Even though the weather's kind of cold right now, it's nice to kind of think about happier, sunnier days. If you're having a hard time getting coverage on your painting at this point, try to put more paint on your paintbrush. It feels like you're putting too much paint on the brush. It should feel like you're going overboard, but realistically, Realistically, you're gonna need more than you expect. So don't be afraid to really load up that brush with paint, really scoop the paint up, pretend that brush is just like a little shovel, and get that paint on there so you can put it on your canvas. It takes away a lot of the fear of messing up our painting when we get that nice background covered. At this point, I have pretty much my whole background covered. So I'm just going on top with some paint residue and some leftover paint that's on my palette and just swiping it around and creating more texture. I'm using quick movements and when I move quickly and I touch the canvas paper lightly, I'm gonna get more of those brush stroke streaks going across. The more paint I have on my brush and the more slowly and deliberately harder that I press on that paper, it the thicker the paint's going to look and the bolder the lines. If you're having a hard time getting some paint on there and it's looking very streaky, try first putting more paint on your brush and then secondly, press harder when you go onto the paper. Next, if you'd like to, this is completely optional, you can mix more water with your paint on your palette, load up that brush and I scraped it across the top of my paper and I let it drip down. Some people like the look of drips, some people don't. You can't control them too much, but if you lift up your paper or your piece of cardboard from that box that you're using, up off the table at an angle, you can let gravity do its thing and help that paint drip down. The higher up you pick up your paper, the more vertical it is, the faster it's gonna drip. If it starts to drip and you want to stop dripping, just lay your paper down again and it'll be flat. Gravity won't be carrying that water or that paint down anymore. If it's not dripping, you need more water. I don't love the look of the drips and they're personally not my favorite. If you try and it's not your favorite, just put more paint on your brush and paint right on top of it. Anything that we don't like, especially with acrylic, it's a very opaque paint. It covers up mistakes very easily. So if you don't like what you did, put more paint on that brush and you can cover it right up. All right, time to make our lilac. Lilacs in general are very cone shaped. They have a wider base and then they taper up to a more narrow flower bud at the top. So. We're going to take that filbert brush with some purple paint. I have the Axazine purple, whatever purple that you have, or you can mix red and blue together. Now when you mix your own purple, it can look a little bit duller than the purple that you buy right out of the bottle from the store. So just keep that in mind if you are mixing your own purple. If you have a tube of purple, I recommend just using it straight from there. We're going to take that filbert brush and lightly, with only a little bit of paint on it, I'm just tapping my paper. Think of that brush like a stamper. You're just stamping on some fluffy flower shapes. We're not gonna make the specific flower petals yet. We'll do that later. We're just making the silhouette of that flower. We want it to be wider at the base and more narrow towards the top. Got a perfect triangle. This is a math class. Things in nature aren't always perfectly triangular like this flower. They're gonna be a little bit more organic and soft. And if you'd like, you can make a little offshoot on the flower. I'm gonna have one on the bottom right side. You'll notice I have a little extra clump sticking out of the side. Just kind of break up that shape some more. So if it's looking too much like a perfect cone, add a little bit of a chunk sticking off to the side. Sometimes lilacs have that little bit of an extra branch with some flowers off to the side. You'll notice that if you have too much paint on your brush or you're pressing too hard, you're going to get a much harsher line. You're not going to get that soft, fluffy look. So make sure you're pressing lightly and you're not pushing too hard and you're not loading up your brush with too much paint this time. We're going to transition away from that background where we had tons of paint on our brush so this flower will be of less paint. If your background is starting to kind of mix into it, leave your paper off to the side for about 5 or 10 minutes. Acrylic paint dries really, really fast. Let the background dry some more and then come back to it and paint that flower on top. Now we're gonna think about our light source. Where's the light coming from? 
We're not going to get too technical with this painting, but we want to pick one side of the flower to be lighter and one side to be darker and have that gradient transition come across. So we want to have a really light side to our flower, a medium lightness, a mid-tone in the middle of our flower, and a dark shadow side. You'll notice on the right hand side of your screen, I have decided to make that the light side of my flower. I'm going to mix a little bit of white with my purple to make a slightly lighter tint of purple. And I'm going to move my brush in clockwise and counterclockwise arcing movements so that my flower petals don't all just go in the same direction and look too repetitive. Again, we're not getting quite into the specific little flower shapes yet. We'll make a couple of those later. But right now, we're just creating that gradient going across from light to medium to dark. So we got to start with our second darkest tone inside, where I have used very little of that purple mix with a little bit of white, where it's mostly just that dark purple. Next, I'm going to take my purple and mix it with even more white this time, and I'm going to concentrate that again on the right hand side of your screen and use it less and less and more sparingly as you transition towards the right hand side of your screen, creating a gradient. I didn't need to sit there and blend it out perfectly. I'm letting those colors just sit next to each other and your eye will transition them on its own. Our eyes and our brains are really amazing things. We can use sort of an optical illusion to make it seem like we blended and created a perfect gradient, but in reality, we just placed slightly lighter, and slightly lighter, and even lighter tints of purple next to each other without having to blend them together. So on the far right hand side of your screen you'll notice I took an even lighter tint of purple which is purple with a lot of white in it and I did the lightest side on the right hand side of your screen. Using that round brush that's smaller than the other brushes you've been using, so the smallest brush so far, we're going to use that like a little flower petal stamper to begin to create little clusters of flowers. I'm using purple mixed with some white on the darkest side of my flower to create just a few specific flower shapes. We're just going to try to create some anchor points for our eye to look at, some clarity areas. We don't need to create every single little flower. I know a lilac is one flower cluster made up of a bunch of teeny tiny little flowers. We don't have to paint hundreds of flowers, just a few to give our eye some key areas to look at. The rest of it will just look like shading and shadows behind it. As we transition towards that lighter side, we need to use a lighter tint of purple. So take that purple and add more white to it as we create those little flower shapes. Those little buds are gonna be clusters of about four petals. Sometimes you can just do two petals, maybe it lost a petal or it's folded, or three, just little areas where we have a different texture now because we're using a different brush. We don't have to sit there and paint the exact shape of a flower. We can use the shape of that brush to our advantage and just stamp on those little flower petals to create little clusters of flowers. As I transition towards the right hand side of your screen, you'll notice that I'm using the lightest tint of purple. That's using a lot of white and a little bit of purple. And some of my petals are extending beyond my flower because I like to sort of diffuse that flower into the background. You don't have to do this, but because we have such a nice light, airy, impressionistic painting, it's fun to throw a couple of flower petals off into the background just for a little bit of extra texture and color. Now we're going to add some cerulean blue. Cerulean blue is a nice sky blue and it reminds us of that bluish purple lilac hue that we all love so much. So mixing in a little bit of blue to that flower, just adding a couple dots in a few places can keep it more interesting. Because it is a painting, it's not a photograph. We're allowed to add some extra colors in there for extra interest. Now with some maples yellow, or if you have primary or lemon yellow, just mix it with a little bit of white. We're gonna add a couple little dots for the center of our little flowers that we created. So wherever you have those little petal clusters, just put a little dot of yellow in the middle, and that'll give us the center of a couple of those flowers, giving it a little bit more detail. Every layer of a little bit of extra detail that we do takes that painting to that next level of looking even more professional, even more impressive. At this point, if you don't love your painting, 
don't worry about it. It's okay, that's not perfect yet. We're going to also add a stem to our flower and that will help to clarify even more what we're looking at. So with some sap green or just green mixed with a little bit of orange if you don't have sap green, we're gonna add a little squiggly stem to the bottom. Things in nature again are not perfect and neither are we. So having a shaky hand is perfect for this step because we don't need that stem to be a perfectly straight line. No ruler is necessary. If you make a wobble too far in one direction, just wobble in the other direction and it'll look like it was intentional. I'm adding a couple little stem lines as well to other areas of the flower so it looks like there's a few areas where that stem is shining through. If you don't like one of the stems that you added, just take some purple and paint right on top of it. It'll cover it right up for you. Now with some sap green and yellow mixed together, I can create a lighter, shade of that green without dulling it down. White can kind of dull things down to more of a pastel hue, which is good for our background, it's good for our flower, but for that stem we want to maintain some of that richness. Green is made up of yellow and blue, so we can mix some yellow in there to lighten it up instead of white. Adding a squiggly little leaf, just that sort of diamond shape with that green, and then a little bit of a squiggle of that yellow and green mixture right on top, a little bit of a leaf shooting off of our flower. And that's about it. In the description of this video is a link to my website where you'll find an add-on video that you can download and use to enhance your painting with additional elements like flowers and butterflies to take it to that next level. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so proud of you for tuning in and giving it a try or just for taking some time for yourself to relax and watch this painting be created. Again, if you want to use that add-on video, check out the link in the description or go to my YouTube page and click on my website where in the shop section you can download an add-on that helps you create some floral elements and some butterflies to really take your painting to the next level. Thank you so much. Hit that subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your page so you never miss a beat. We'll be working in watercolor and acrylic in the future and even branching out into some drawing tips. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next time. I can't wait.